Welcome back to the Available Post Podcast, the podcast where I speak into the void and maybe someone listens. I'm your host, Callum, and uh, yeah, we're in for a we're in for a pretty wild September. Welcome to September first. Uh, first things first, I'd like to say insane that I have 270 subscribers on my YouTube channel at this moment. Uh, thanks to everyone who's there and thanks to everyone who's listening to this. That is pretty wild. Pretty wild, I have to say. Uh, yeah. Well, we're going to dive right into it. Last month in good old August, I, uh, was away for a bit. Did a little recording session down in our nation's ex-capital, Kingston. It was great. We have... We, we being the band Teleportus, go listen to us on Spotify, Apple Play, whatever you decide to listen to your music on. Uh, you should definitely listen to Teleportus. Teleportus, Teleportus, Teleportus. Teleportus, like teleport and tortoise put together. That's how you spell it. Uh, go check them out. We just finished recording the album, a uh, little EP. It's probably some of the best stuff we've ever done. Maybe some of the best stuff ever created ever. Uh, waiting for it to be mixed. Then we'll get it mastered. Then it'll be in your cute little pause momentarily. Probably, I don't know, um, end of the, before the year ends for sure. That's what we did. That's what I did in August. You know, made a bunch of videos as I do daily uploads. You know how it goes. I mean, you probably get the notifications and ignore them. I know how it is. It's the way it is. You know, we played a bunch of Arcadia Atlas, which is awesome. I've been really enjoying that. We finally finished Forgive Me, Father. That's done now. Uh, waiting for the second one to come out, and maybe I'll play some of that. You know, the usual bunch of magic stuff like that. Things to look forward to. Little look forward here that will be coming out. I'm going to be playing a game called Mortal Sin, maybe, at least once. That'll be kind of cool. Looks like a fun, like, roguelike first-person thing. I'm kind of digging the first-person shooters. I don't know, maybe there's a... Maybe there's a new renaissance of that kind of thing going on. Oh, yeah, there's also Remnant 2 I've been playing with my brothers. You should definitely check that out if you want a time where I play with my brothers. And it's, it's good. It's good fun. It's good fun. They're funnier than me, so, I mean better to uh, have them to fall back on but uh by the time this comes out i'm already gonna have played parasocial the new chillas arts game i haven't played it yet because right now it's monday the 28th but when you're hearing this i've already played it because i'm playing it on wednesday for hump day horror where you can find the, me playing wednesday games pretty much every wednesday at twitch.tv slash feral lamb uh, but yeah, I might play some Graveyard Keeper. That was on sale, so maybe I'll play some of that. Uh, I have a very special, very special Armored Core style game in the works. Ooh, don't wanna, don't wanna spoil it too much. It'll, uh, I'm gonna play a bit of that. You know, stuff like that. We're gonna continue with the Arcadia Atlas. It's gonna be fun. I'm having a great time with that. The story's fun. Combat's neat. Character design's cool. Uh, a great little tactical RPG that deserves some attention. But what what's really going on here is that, uh, you know, a couple new updates to some games. You don't ever see me play Genshin Impact that much on this channel anymore. Maybe once or twice every once in a while. Which, by the way, maybe I should start playing it again because my wife got recommended a Genshin video of someone starting out and playing by the name of Feral Cabbage. They're trying to take my brand. They're trying to take my name. They're trying to take everything from me. Even my wife and her viewing time. So when I checked out, it was fine. It was cool. It was whatever. They seem like a fine YouTuber. I'm not going to endorse anyone, though, because I know how that turns out. I know how that turns out. I've been on, I've been on the internet. I haven't been recording as long as it is, but I've been on the internet to know that if you... <laughs> Start endorsing YouTubers, bad things come out about them. So I'm not endorsing anybody but myself. And, uh, but yeah, that was, uh, I found that really strange. Maybe I'll put some Genshin stuff up. Maybe, uh, you know, Fontaine just came out. We got the, uh, Wet Capital. And, uh, we can get wet and wild. As we should. But more importantly, I mean, it's pretty important. Genshin Impact getting an update, really cool. New place, you can dive underwater. It's fun stuff. 
More importantly, though, Magic the Gathering will have a set coming out when a little bit after this this beautiful this beautiful podcast comes up. Oh my God! I haven't. I mean, the Lord of the Rings set was really cool and actually really fun to play. Super cool to draft. Uh, changed up a bunch of formats, but what it didn't change up was standard. Standard right now is is kind of miserable, to be completely honest. Uh, not miserable. I mean, it's fine. It's balanced. It's okay. But, like, how many Shildreds do you want to see before you just go to bed and sleep? Like, the banning was definitely necessary because everything was just be able to Mirror Breaker and Shildred and Invoke Despair. Now it's just Shildred, but, you know, you can play other decks, that, but it's it's weird. It's fine, though, because Wilds of Eldraine looks so good. Everything about the set looks so amazing. I'm super hyped again to go back to Eldraine because I know everyone's going to say, oh, this set seems okay. It's fine. It's going to be busted. This set's also going to be busted. I can already tell Adventure is such a such a huge wild mechanic. Yeah, we don't have Edge Wall Innkeeper. Yeah, we don't have Lucky Clover. But I still think just every card being actually two cards and not like an MDFC, which, you know, it has two sides to a card. It's like literally just two cards uh, that you get to cast both of at different times in the game means you're starting. It's kind of like the companion problem where you're, you're starting with eight cards. Now you're starting with like 12 cards in hand because uh, you, your cards do everything. And like both sides of a lot of these cards actually are good. So, and you know, ways to recur. There's a lot of cool, a lot of cool recursion going on. A lot of cool, like, abilities and damage and stuff. I dig it. I think we're gonna be in for a huge standard shakeup. And I mean, come on. We got the Goose Mother. The Goose Mother is coming out to Wilds of Eldrain. Uh, you get to honk at people. You get your pet that's the goose, which you gotta honk at people, which is probably the best thing to happen since magic was ever created. I mean, being able to, you know, mop, mop at people, perfect. Uh, but the goose mother, as a card, you can you can have it as your commander for all you commander freaks out there, or I guess brawl freaks. I don't know. I don't know what's more freakish, being a brawl freak or commander freak. Probably commander. You want to play with multiple people, one v one, shame one opponent. Because once you shame that one opponent, they don't get friends to come team up on you. You just keep on shaming them. It's awesome. That's why one on one is the way to go in Magic. Maybe I'm a purist. Maybe I'm not. I only play on Arena, so I mean, I only have one option, anyways. Uh, that's that's my story about that. But we got some bangers of cards coming out, and uh, let's talk about a couple ones. And uh, what are the best cards to come? from this entire set though is definitely Feral Encounter because it's just me. Feral Encounter. I have to pick it in every draft. No matter what, I don't care if I'm a mono black deck or a mono blue deck. I have to pick the double green sorcery that looks at the top five cards of your library and you may exile a creature card from among them, put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. You may cast the exile card this turn. At the beginning of your next combat phase this turn, target creature you control deals damage to his power to another creature you don't control it has a search effect you get a creature that you can cast that turn if you want to you get a delayed fight effect which people are kind of saying it's awkward people are people are shitting on feral encounter and i won't have it i think this card's actually way better than it looks having the delayed trigger makes it so much better um than it could possibly be because then you don't have to fight with the creature that comes into play you could fight with a creature that's already in play and just get card advantage. Um, yeah. You can choose not to fight. Right? Like, maybe. Uh, target creature you control. Oh, no. No, you, no, you choose. Yeah, no. It's not, even, it's not even a fight. It just deals damage. I think, I think Feral Encounter is, like, extremely strong. The only downside to the card is, obviously, it's a sorcery. And you have to play it on your pre-combat main phase. Because if you play it on your post-combat main phase, you don't actually get the fight ability. Or the um, damage ability, which is no bueno. 
which means not very good. No goodness. There's no goodness happening there. I think. I don't speak Spanish. I don't really care. So we got Pharaoh Encounter. Obviously, that's my honorable mention for cards that are going to be extremely good. Uh, we have super sweet cards like Turtle Man, uh, Blossoming Tortoise, uh, which is kind of like a Teleportus. Teleportus on all your streaming platforms. Uh, yeah. Whenever... It's a, it's a four mana, four mana three, three, which not great stats. It's a mythic rare though. So that'll be pretty cool to not be able to get enough of them. You know how that goes. Uh, but good old BT over here is, uh, yeah, whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, mill three cards and return a land from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Activated abilities on lands you control cost one less to activate and land creatures get plus one, plus one. I think Blossoming Tortoise, people, people are kind of like brewing it they're like oh it's such a cool of uh, like ability and stuff it might be cool to make like a infinite combo and like legacy or something with it i'm thinking no i think blossoming tortoise obviously it doesn't get through good old shelly shelly the apocalypse just kind of punches it down so you're not going to be attacking with it too much but i think just having the ability to animate your new creature lands at m one less mana and also Giving your lands plus three, plus three, or plus one, plus one, uh, is pretty amazing. Uh, being able to ramp you, also good. Milling cards, really cool. I think there's going to be a really cool reanimator style decks. Uh, but really what I'm interested with that card with is cards like... Uh, obviously, the Restless Cottage becomes a big old 4-4. Four -four. And then it can create a food token and exile a creature when it attacks. But it'll be a 5-5 five, five with your tortoise. So you'll be able to get through Shildred. Great. Great news, right? Your lands will be able to get through Shildred. And it'll only be 3 mana to activate with your tortoise out. Amazing. It adds black, it adds green. Really good. Restless Vine Stock is a... You need five mana to do it, but if you got your tortoise out, it's only four, which, you know, you already have four mana because you played your stupid tortoise. Turn a turn, it becomes a 5-5 five, five with Trample. Very cool. And when it attacks, another target creature gets based up to 3-3. Uh, three, three. So you turn the Shildred or whatever they have blocking into a 3-3. Three, three. Your big stupid vine can punch through and you'll have a 6-6. Six, six. Really awesome. Very good. 10 out of 10. Uh, yeah. We also have full art lands that look really, really cool. Gives me very storybook vibe. Um, actually reminds me a lot of, like, Bramble. Like, that kind of, um, Nordic-style fairy tale. Which I guess is what the whole set's about. But very cool, very cool-looking art on those. Especially the planes. I think the planes might be the best one. Uh, I do like the little archway in the forest, but I think the plains with all the uh, bra like actual brambles on the ground and a little castle in the background might be the coolest full art plains available. But we got we have so many so many busted good cards in this set. Uh, you can find all the spoilers at basically just type in Wilds of Eldraine spoilers, and they're all up now. They're all up, fully released by our beautiful, lovely Wizards of the Coast overlords, the Hasbro Kings, um, the Prophet Generators. Uh, but really, we got we got really good stuff. We got really, really strong stuff. And the problem I have with the, the only problem I have with the set is that like uh, most of the good cards are all the black cards, which is already the best color in standard. So it's going to get twice as better in standard. We got like Besiege the Mirror, which you can search for a card, exile it face down, then shuffle. Uh, if it, if you can bargain this spell, which bargaining is you sacrifice an artifact, enchantment, or token as you cast the spell as an additional cost to get the better effect. Uh, but if you may cast the exile card without paying its mana cost, if that spell's value is four or less, you can, uh, yeah, you can cast it for free or if not you just put the card in your hand so it's a four mana it's demonic tutor or diabolic tutor i guess good old grinning skeleton man it's diabolic tutor search for a card or if you bargain it you can cast a spell from your deck four or less for free problem with that is that it's four mana tutor for shildred put into play you basically have a uh, bargain put a children into play so you have eight shildreds in your deck not great for 
Printing a second Shildred essentially is uh, not so great, especially because it's like on curve, exact same cost. Not great for standard. Uh, pretty wild, in fact. But so we got stuff like that. I don't know. Besiege the mirror might be might be too good. Uh, but then we also have like amazing removal spells, like the end, which uh, costs less if your life is uh, five or less, which whatever. But it's a four mana cost instant speed removal spell. You get an exile target creature planeswalker. Then you get to search all of their stuff and exile all permanents with the same name. So where we have besiege the mirror to exile or to bring out your shieldreds, we have the end to get rid of shieldred forever. And so you never have to see it again, which I'm, I, I mean, the problem is you have to play black. They're both in black. So now you just have to play black. So it's just going to be children mirrors, but you're, who can cast the end first and get rid of their children's and then maybe you can play a fair game of magic. Maybe. Uh, we've got sweet reprints. I didn't know dream spoilers was reprinted, but dream spoilers is back from our beautiful place. Our beautiful plane of, um... Pretty sure it was on Shadowmoor? Maybe Eventide? Dream Spoilers was from? It's one of those two. Uh, but basically, if you cast a spell during your opponent's turn, you get a give something else, minus one, minus one. Cool little fairy. Fairies are back. Fairies are, fairies are wet and wild, you know? But other cards that I'm, I'm not really excited about, Dream Spoilers, I think it's going to be good in Limited. I don't know how much play it'll see in Constructed, but maybe. If fairies, if fairies picks up, because there are some really strong, like, fairy-centric cards. It might be good enough to play, uh, which is cool. I'm down for that. But I think the card I'm most excited for from the black decks is Lich Knight's Conquest. A card I haven't really seen anyone talk about. Maybe they are talking about it. I don't watch that much content, but I watch a lot of content. Who cares? Knight, uh, Lich Knight's Conquest, five mana cost. Four colorless, one black. It's a sorcery. You can sacrifice any number of artifacts, enchantments, and or tokens. Return that many creatures from your graveyard to the battlefield. It's a mass sack swap kind of thing. And um, it doesn't target. So you can... At worst, it's like a full blink redo um, into the battlefield effects. Uh, well, not really, because you can't really, unless you have artifact creatures or enchantment creatures, but being able to return the creatures from your graveyard to play in a big way, I think as a five mana cost sorcery is already just usually a one, like you get one creature, but if you can sacrifice a bunch of food tokens, bring back like three creatures for five mana, that's basically game ending. I think, uh, Lich Knight's Conquest is going to be... Quite the banger. Uh, the problem with standard never rotating and staying the same forever as a weird stagnant standard is that we still have Sunfall. We still have Farewell. So you got to really watch out for the white decks. Uh, so I guess you have to play some blue to just counter spells. So it's going to be weird. It's going to be some sort of blue-black deck. I don't know if standard's ever seen this before. But we're going to be playing like a blue-black control deck <laughs> with Shildreds or something. Weird, right? But... I'm excited for a good old Conquest. Super cool card. Uh, there's a bunch of... There's a bunch of, like, neat little things. Like, Virtue of Persistence is another reanimator thing that is... You can go on the little little adventure to give something minus three, minus three, and then it comes into play. When For seven mana, you can cast as an enchantment that you get a reanimated creature every upkeep. It's good. Uh, I don't think it's, like insanely good we've seen stuff like um the phyrexian portal be good obviously if you could reanimate it and like bop your opponent that's really good but it's usually just too slow and i don't know if minus three minus three is going to be that much better it's, it's going to hit like a lot of good like cheap stuff it's going to be all right it's only a sorcery you gain two life that's not something that's not um, something to snuff at. I think gaining life is very strong, especially in a in a format like standard. Gaining two life can be the best thing you can do in like a control deck or something. Sometimes you just need to gain a little bit of incidental life just so you don't die. Uh, yeah, that's my story about that whole thing. We got some really cool 
We got some like cool white cards that I think well actually we we have a white really cool white card in my opinion. And that one card is actually a saga that I don't know. Well, there's also Moonshaker Cavalier. So I got Cavalry. So there's a, there's two really cool white cards. Uh, Princess Takes Flight, I think, is going to be an amazing card uh, to get as, like, a removal spell. So it's three mana. Uh, its first lore counter is exile up to one target creature. So you're going to eat something. And then the second lore counter is target creature gets plus two, plus two. Gains flying until the end of turn. So you kind of just jump someone else. And then... Third counter is you return back the creature. So, what you do, pay three mana, exile creature. Next turn, jump one of your creatures plus two plus two, and then you can bargain your princess takes flight, basically for free, exiling the creature forever. I think this might be just one of the best um, creature removal spells that we have access to that is like not really not that conditional and you get value out of it afterwards and you can uh you can bargain it because it's an enchantment so you can just play kind of like a black white bargain or like blue white bargain uh really cool anything you can bargain just having incidental bargain triggers in play i think it's going to be super strong for standard uh moonshaker cavalry is very good I mean, it's just good, right? Like, it's a 6-6 six, six for 8. It's a flyer. It's a spirit knight. When it comes into play, creatures you control gain flying and plus X plus X, where X is the number of creatures you control. It's like Crater Hoof Behemoth. It ends the game. Everyone gets flying. You jump through. It doesn't have to trample, but honestly, flying is... Whatever evasive effect you get is going to be insane. All your creatures are going to be massive. You can reanimate this target which is probably going to be the easiest way to get into play in standard. You can have just a bunch of incidental, like, 1-1 one, one rat tokens and stuff just to throw it into play, smash with it. I think it's going to see loads of play. That's going to be... Those Those are the two white cards I'm going to look out for. I think are probably going to be... Going to be the blowout cards. There's going to be some good, like, cheap creatures that'll see some play, too. Like, a little cheeky house mouse will probably see play just because it's a 1-2 for 1. And it's got the wonderful adventure text and also the good creature type mouse. Might be good. Something like that. Uh, but really, I think the princess takes flight as a removal spell and bargain target. It's going to be really strong. And Moonshaker Cavalry isn't, isn't going to fit into like the white decks. But it's certainly going to, certainly going to go into like a reanimator style deck. And I think standard is really gearing up for that kind of a thing. Just, uh, yeah, and it'll end the game pretty quick. There's lots of self-mill as well, so... It won't be that hard to get it there. There's Maybe there's cards to discard cards. I'm not sure. I haven't seen too much of that, but I'm sure there's looting effects of some sort. Yeah, look out for... Uh, I mean, look out for me definitely playing Moonshaker Cavalry in some sort of token reanimator deck, for sure. We got blue cards... There's lots of blue cards, you know, like Pickpock Prankster, I think might be one of the most fun alliterations, but also uh, a really strong card because it's got an adventure text, of course, because as we learned in the first Eldraine, adventure is completely bonkers. And uh, yeah, we get to play a little Pickpock Prankster. Picklock Prankster. Pickpock Prankster? Prankpock Pickster. That's fine. We get to free the Fae, mills four cards. Put target instant or sorcery uh, or fairy card from among them into your hand, but you get to mill four cards for two mana. That itself is worth getting like the value out of it, but then it's also a for two mana a flying one three vigilance fairy, which is unlike mouse actually a very good um very good creature type because it uh, has a lot of gameplay with it. Uh. Sleep Cursed Fairy as a blue spell is uh, also a card that I think will be very good, but not for it being a 3-3 three, three for 1, but because it has the ability to pay 2 to untap it. Uh, it comes to the battlefield with 3 stun counters. It has flying and ward 2, uh, which that, that's all fine. Uh, but really, 
there's a card later I'm going to talk about and uh, making that untap ability on a creature. It's just one blue, one colorless, untap, uh, whatever, Sleep Curse Fairy. That's going to be amazing. The, the stun counters make it really tough to untap this creature, but that's fine. It's the way it goes. Uh, quick Study. Not really a notable card, but it is the power creep we all feared, all loathed. But it's here. Quick Study's here. You remember Divination. Everyone remember Divination, of course. Two, one blue, sorcery, draw two cards. Well, Quick Study is the exact same card, except for it's an instant. The power creep is real. You play on your opponent's turn now. It is, it does make Divination watch better. I think that it'll probably see play. Um, yeah, I think it'll see play. I think it's just solid, good, fine. It's a common, so it's gonna, might see Popper play if people still play Popper. I'm sure they do on Magic Ar Online. I wish there was just a Popper format on Magic Arena. Or artisan, or you know, just just other options that we can play, but they don't care unless it's standard or historic. And actually, they don't care unless it's alchemy and they can sell more cards. But maybe maybe they'll they'll gear up and figure something out in the future to make it so we can actually play whatever magic we want to play. I haven't even looked at the red cards because normally I don't. I don't care about red cards too much until until late into late into the oh my god hearth elemental discard your hand draw two cards for two mana and then you get a creature afterwards that's gonna be pretty wild for something like uh oh my dog's found a fly she's going wild you all right there b no nah, she's on the hunt that's fine she'll kill that fly she'll actually get it right by the wings and just rip it around and uh Spin it around until it has no more wings. And then she'll just stare at it and ask me if she did a good job. And I'll say, yeah, you did. You did do a good job, Bean. Uh, but yeah, Hearth Elemental will be good in something like Dredge. Discard your hand, draw two cards for two mana. will be really strong. Almost game winning. And then it's also a creature for whatever that means. Uh, this spell costs X less where X the number of cards in your graveyard that are instant cards, sorcery cards, and, have ad and or have adventure. So you can also... Potentially discard your hand and cast a very cheap 4-5, depending on what you got going on. So that's kind of exciting for a red spell. Everything else is just, you know, the classic bargain deal damage. Make some rats with the song of Totentats. Things like that, which are, uh, okay. I don't know if it's, I don't know. Red doesn't excite me as much as it could. Uh, unless you get really wacky cards, but I don't really see any wacky cards i just see decent cards like food fight is a wacky name but it just makes your artifacts be able to sac like you can sacrifice your artifacts and then you can deal damage you can throw your food at people all your artifacts have pay to sacrifice an art artifact it deals damage to target to any target equal to one plus the number of permanents named food fight you control so you get like three food fights into play and you just deal like four damage i guess yeah, you deal four damage per artifact you sacrifice. It can be pretty wild. Like, it's strong. It's just got a silly name. But it's not, like, it's not that exciting. Uh, but, you know, things like Beanstalk Worm's exciting. And green. Green's an exciting color. I like green a lot. Especially when it's compared with blue and black. Or even, probably white these days. It might be, like, a white-black-green kind of thing I'll be going with. Maybe blue-black just for, like, the lands. But, you know, being stock worm, you play additional land as, like, a sorcery, and then it's a big 5-4 later on in the game. Very good. Uh, it'll be, it'll be strong. He's any way to ramp. Any way to ramp in this format is going to be really good. There's, like, you know, the classic stuff, like a little elf or a satyr, I guess, that adds mana for two mana. Things like that. Whatever. We got Titanic Growth coming back. Got some great artwork of a big fairy staring down at some dudes. That's kind of cute. Gives target creature plus four plus four. I like that. The artwork's amazing in this set. Really fun. Uh, but then we get to the multicolor cards. And this is where we've got. we got the Mother Goose. The Mother Goose. Mwah. Beautiful design. It's like Hydroid Crisis, but not quite as broken. Uh, it's one green, one blue, and X. Comes into play with X plus one plus one counters. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you create 
half X food tokens rounded up. So no matter what, if you pay one, you get a 3-3 three, three and you get a food token. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Half of one rounded up is one. Half of one rounded down is zero. But rounded up. So you get, you know, you get your little food token. So if you pay the odd, pay the odd man as you still get the extra token, which is nice. Different than Hydroid Crisis. So that's good. Uh, whenever the Goose Mother attacks, you may sacrifice a food. If you do, draw a card. So you just attack, draw cards, make the goose. Make the goose, feed the goose, attack with the goose. It starts off as a 2-2, though, which is also very important. So, like, if you pay it for three mana, you get a 3-3 and a food that you can attack and draw a card. Five mana, you get a 5-5 five five with two foods. Kind of cool. Makes artifacts. It's a nice legendary bird hydra. And it's a goose hydra. I mean, it's a goose hydra. What do you, what do you want to say? What do you want me to say? It's great design. It's a goose. It's a hydra. They put it together. It's delightful. Uh, yeah. It's perfect. We also have stuff like Hydla of the Icy Crown. Really cool art design. A little spiky Icy Crown gives me very, like, Ice Queen vibes. Nice. But whenever you tap an untapped creature an opponent controls, you would pay one and then either choose one of three things. You get to create a 4-4 four, four blue elemental, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control, or scry two, draw a card. That card's insane. If you have ways to tap your opponent's creatures at all, like, you cast Sleep, uh, and then you pay, like, <laughs> four mana and just make four four fours. This card's insane. Uh, I don't... Yeah. It's completely crazy. Uh, her crown, if you have her with her crown, her crown lets you tap something for one, but if it's your turn, it costs one less. So you can just tap that, pay one, make a four four, tap a creature every turn. I the value from something like this is completely insane. Yeah, you need a couple pieces to go, but I think Hydla of the Icy Crown is going to be pretty nuts in the right shells and decks. Yeah, that's that's all I have to say about that. We got a Fairy Lord that is a two-two for two flash, and uh, whenever a fairy enters the battlefield, each opponent loses one life. That's great too. You know, just good reach that you don't have to attack you can kind of just like play the defensive play like the Trixie Trixie fairy ways good stuff blue black cards uh, I think fairies are looking fairies are looking pretty good that's pretty good fairy matters cards uh, yeah I mean there's elusive otter elusive otter is a 1-1 one, one prowess for one uh, that creatures with uh, more power or with less power than it can't block it really cool but it also has a green spell that can distribute X plus one plus one counters among any type of number of targeted creatures you control. So you kind of spread out counters, and then you can play the Elusive Otter. Very cool. Uh, elusive Otter being also way better, and Prowess being extremely strong in this set. Just because, I mean, all your creatures and threats are also spells. So you can use the spell sides pump up all your creatures that are elusive threats even elusive otter if you have four in your hand right you cast you cast an elusive otter next turn you can groves bounty it with the other elusive otter get attack in for three then cast the elusive otter groves bounty both of your creatures it's pretty wild you can i uh, like i said like i said at the beginning of this it's like you have like 12 cards in hand at all times pretty wild pretty wild pretty great uh, speaking of wild and great, good old Mosswood Dread Knight, my boy. He's over there as a human knight. He's a 3-2 for 3 with Trample. Trample's important. Uh, you can use his, uh, ability to Dread Whispers. You draw a card, lose a life for 2 mana. It's below the curve, but, you know, it's not bad. But what really makes him good... Is that when he dies, you may cast him from your graveyard as an adventure until end of your next turn. So, he dies. Goes to your graveyard. You can do Dread Whispers. He goes exiled. And then you can cast him again. Super recursive. You draw the card always. You get a 3-2 trample. You can use it for, like, sacrifice effects. You can use it for blocking. You can use it for attacking. Um, gives you till the end of your next turn. You get your, like, prowess triggers or whatever. Casting sorceries card is very strong uh the only card i actually want to talk about i know i've talked about a lot of cards but like there's the iron crag too 
I guess that's a cool card I could talk about now. It's first time in a long time since we've had a mana rock for two mana in standard. It's a legendary artifact. It taps at a colorless mana. That's pretty huge, honestly. Um, and whenever a legendary creature you control enters the battlefield, you can turn it into a Everflame Hero's Legacy, an equipment that gives plus three plus three, uh, but it loses its tap to add mana. So if you have too many Iron Crags in your hand or if you want late game, you can do that. Iron Crag can be sacrificed for a bargain. It's pretty wild. It's a nuts card. It just means Shieldreds are going to come down turn three. That's all this card says. Shieldred costs one less is what the Iron Crag really says when it's in play. And that's fun. Fun for the whole family, I guess, if you like Shieldreds. But Agatha Soul Cauldron is what I really want to talk about today. And it is two mana, art legendary artifact. Obviously, great. It's two mana. It's legendary artifact. What could go wrong? You spend mana as though it were any color mana to activate abilities. Oh my god. Activate abilities of creatures you control. So basically you can spend any color of mana. You can activate the abilities of all your creatures as though it was any color. Good. Everything's colorless basically for abilities. Then, second part of text, creatures you control plus one plus one counters on them have all abilities of all the creature cards exiled with Agatha's Soul Cauldron. That's where this gets really spicy. And then it's activated ability target, or exile target creature from a graveyard. When a creature card is exiled this way, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. So, this is where we're going to get back to that beautiful little untap fairy. Right, you got a cute little fairy that untaps for two mana. And uh, that means you can exile that card uh, with Agatha's Soul Cauldron. Give a creature plus one plus one counter, and then that creature can have untap. So now if you have anything that taps for three mana, you can go infinite mana. That means you can have like, there's also like loads of different creatures that have activated abilities, uh, whether tapping or not tapping, uh, just to make things go crazy. Uh, so yeah, you can just go infinite with loads of different things. You can get like mana things, you can get, yeah, pretty much anything. Like there's this one card that says sacrifice of food, put a plus one plus one counter target creature. That you can get. And you can sacrifice food, draw a card, and lose a life. You can just make all your creatures have that ability. Uh, you, It's good. It's very good. Uh, I think it's going to be a niche deck. Because obviously, Shieldred has static abilities. So it doesn't really... You can't just exile your Shieldred and give all your creatures... Whenever your opponent draws a card, they lose two life. Whenever you draw a card, you gain two life. Because that, be, that would be the ideal way. But with a plus one plus one counter theme... I get the Soul Cauldron, I think, is just a must-add. All decks, all the time, every day. It'd be perfect. Now, that's, that's the main set. But now we got a whole bunch of cards that are in the showcase. Now, I want to preface that there are some banned cards in the showcase. Which, uh, banned in, banned in our lovely historic pre-band which is nonsense if you ask me uh sneak attack necropotence band i get it uh i get it you don't want to have necropotence you don't want to have blood moon you don't want to have sneak attack um sure but what they did ban was Spreading Seas. I can't play Spreading Seas. I can't play Spreading Seas in my historic deck. People are allowed to, like... People are allowed to play some pretty wild things in historic. Like, you can have two mana rock. You can have... You can just Ulamog people on turn, like, four. You can have Nykthos with, uh... All the stuff banned in Explorer that makes the Nykthos extra busted. Like the Ley Line. But I'm not allowed to Spreading the Seas. If you're allowed to play Nykthos, I should be able to play Spreading Seas. I don't understand why that card's banned. But we are getting some really sweet cards to, um... Yeah, we're getting some really sweet cards. I just, gotta, I just want to find a list of what they're called. Mm -hmm. 
da, da, da. what are we what are they called uh reprints this is just notable re i don't care about notable reprints i just want all the reprints oh who knows what are they called though mystical archives i think i think they're called mystical archives this is the best part i know this is google foo right now No, I don't want this. All right, well, who cares? You know, if there's some Mystical Archive cards, they're going to be pretty cool. I can't find them right now. I know they exist. You'll get one in every pack, I think. Regular packs, which is really neat. And, uh... Oh, my God, where are they? Oh, make me eat my microphone right now. Uh, what do we got? Yeah, no, it's not showing up. But I know we're getting cool cards, and a bunch of them won't be allowed in Historic. Those four. That's my story on that. I think Spreading Sea should be allowed in every format. I don't think it'd be that broken. I just want a Sun Titan and put my Spreading Seas on people's lands forever and always. But I guess they said no. And I'm sure there'll be something else that was busted from the set that they will not be able to put into historic but they do anyways and then maybe they'll just revamp it in such a horrible way that or they should just ban it they should ban it instead of revamping it for sure but that's my little magic talk that was woo, oh lord yeah i just kind of rambled on about magic for a while didn't i anyways uh i think i think that'll do it for now look look forward to september september's gonna be great because after that it's october and come on october me October, Hump Day Horror Guy, October. Yeah, it's going to be a great time. Look forward to look forward to the new videos. Let me know in the comments of this video what you want to talk me to talk about next time on the podcast cuz I'll talk about that maybe or I'll just ignore you. But I probably won't. I'll definitely read your comment and your likes. I'll read your likes, I'll read your subscriptions, you know how it goes. Thanks for joining me on this lovely journey and uh 270 people. Woo! All right. Thanks very much. Catch you in the next one. Bye for now.